our entrance antiphon. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. In his presence are majesty and splendor, strength and honor in his holy place. Good afternoon. Welcome to the 4 p.m. Mass at Our Lady, Queen of the Universe Catholic Church. Thank you for joining us today in the celebration of God's love. Today is the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, and the intention for today's Mass is in thanksgiving to God for Eliasar Gonzalez. The following are the announcements for this week. This Tuesday, we will resume with our daily Mass schedule as well as the Eucharistic Adoration schedule. Please join us for daily Mass and consider making a commitment for one hour of Eucharistic Adoration a week. Do you wish to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation? Confessions are held every Thursday, beginning at 6.30 p.m. at St. Joseph. CCD classes have resumed on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at Queen of the Universe CCD building. Please note that classes for grades 7 through 12 will only be in person. Parents who may still not want to send their children for in-person instruction may pick up their lesson at the parish office and homeschool them. Online classes will continue for grades K through six. The next celebration of baptism will be held on Sunday, February 27th at 3 p.m. at St. Joseph. Registration is already underway at the parish office and will conclude on Friday, February 18th. Please note that the celebration of baptisms will not be until after Easter. The 2022 parish calendars have arrived. Please take one after Mass. The 2022 Mass Intentions book is already open. To schedule a Mass Intention, please come by the parish office. Let us reflect. God's law. Scripture has always held God's law to be the path to human happiness. In today's first reading, Ezra, the priest, reads the scroll of the law to the people returned from exile. They weep, then are joyful. Israel's relationship with God had always been defined by how they kept and lived God's law. The author of Psalm 96, likewise, praises the law of God as the source of wisdom joy and enlightenment, enlightenment, purity and justice. In his advice to the bickering Corinthians, Paul points out that just as God has made all parts of a human body essential for the health of the whole living as Christ's body, requires that each member be recognized as necessary for the good of all. Finally, in Luke's gospel, Jesus claims that the Spirit is sending him to relieve human suffering. Like Ezra, he is reading from a scroll, proclaiming God's law of mercy to those in need.
afternoon, church. Good afternoon, Father. Welcome to Mass. We gather in His presence as we say together with one voice, in the name of the Father, and, and of the, the Son, Son, and, and of the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. To those of you who are joining us from the domestic church, likewise, welcome. Please send us your petitions, your prayer needs, and we will be more than happy to pray for your needs as well. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we come before the Lord this afternoon, as we prepare ourselves uh, to celebrate this liturgy, we call to mind our sins. We call to mind the times that we uh, were angry, when we said things that we were not supposed to, when we did things that we were not supposed to. But we also call to mind God's mercy, compassion, and we ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have come to heal the brokenhearted. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have come to reconcile us back to the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have come that we might be reconciled with one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Joyfully now we sing to the glory of God. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure. Then in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen now to God's Word. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, 
He read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they, are, if they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety. Whereas, our more presentable parts do not need this, but God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. Since many have undertaken 
to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the, peop to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. If I happen to trip and fall, uh, don't laugh, <laughs> pick me up. Um, I finally got my glasses, but I cannot get used to them. Um, so I used to wear glasses a long time ago uh, to, to see far, because I, 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 was, I was young and I could, didn't need them to read up close. Then I got LASIK about 15, 20 years ago, I don't know. But a few years ago, I began to need readers, and then lately I also needed to see you, your beautiful faces. So I got progressives, and I don't like them. I can't get used to them. So if anybody, they say that that's normal? Anybody have progressives? I, I cannot, I, I can see, now I can see your beautiful faces, but I cannot read. I mean, the, the, the reading part is underneath, but I have to go like this. Is that normal or? I don't like them. And then if I look sideways, you look bl very blurry. I don't know, I, 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 I kind of like the readers. The only problem with the readers, because I, I could read clearly, the only problem with the readers is that um, when I look up, yeah, I look very blurry. Which perhaps is a good thing, because that's, that's why I don't see if you're making any faces at me or anything. Right? <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I, I, I will go back and see. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't like him. And then circles look oval. If I look at him a certain way, I don't know. So. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Bring me my readers, please, and my water. <laughs> I mean, the whole idea is that you don't, I don't switch back and forth. All right, uh, so let's look at the context of today's reading. Uh, we are, the, for the most part, in Luke chapter 4. Only the beginning of it is um, uh, from Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And that's the introduction uh, and purpose of the gospel. Introduction to the gospel and the purpose of the gospel. Thank you. And so, um, it is written by Luke, the same author as, um, as the Acts of the Apostles. And it is written uh, to a certain man named Theophilus. Uh, Theophilus was perhaps the wealthy um, patron, uh, benefactor, who paid for Luke to write this story. So it's dedicated or written to Theophilus. And it is basically what it says. It is written in order to provide the sequence of events, basically the gospel. Right? And then it jumps uh, to chapter 4, verse 14. From chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, it jumps to 4. 1421, which is the main story of today. Jesus going to the synagogue. So between chapter 1.15 uh, to 413, we have three main things. Uh, chapter 1, 5 to 252, basically all of the rest of chapter 1 and all of 2 is the infancy narrative of Jesus. Uh, is, I put Jesus twice there. Of Jesus and John up to the losing and finding of the boy Jesus in the temple. Uh, Luke 3 
uh, has to do with the preaching of John and the baptism of the Lord. The beginning of Luke 4, which you don't have today, is a temptation in the desert, which you will see the first Sunday uh, of Lent, I believe, or sometime in Lent. Okay, so we're going to focus on uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 21, which is the mission and the purpose of the Lord. And so if we visualize, after the baptism, he goes to the desert and is tempted, and then he comes back uh, in power, and he goes back to Galilee, to uh, specifically to, um, to Nazareth, where he's reared, where he was reared. And then he goes to the synagogue, like he always did every Saturday. And then he begins to read a passage from Isaiah. But what's controversial is that at the end, it wasn't enough that he just read it. At the end, he says, by the way, this passage has been fulfilled in your hearing. Upon you hearing it right now, in this very moment, this passage has been fulfilled. So imagine how the people that were listening to him felt. Uh, not very happy because they knew him. I mean, they knew him since he was little. He was, this is in Nazareth where he was reared. Uh, and so they were not very pleased. I mean, he's basically claiming that the scriptures in the Old Testament are about him. I mean, we know that that's true, but for the first time when he said it, you can imagine uh, the controversy. Uh, but what is it that he read? Again, what he's reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Um, and it's not referring to Jesus in Isaiah. It's about the servant of the Lord. The Lord himself, Jesus is applying it to himself. Um, and of course, we, we as a church, we believe that it was about him. So there are five um, applications, if you will. Uh, five uh, manifestations um, or parts to his purpose uh, that he's basically saying, this is what I plan to do. Think of it as, uh, like when a new president is elected and they give the very first public address, they, they lay down uh, an outline of what they plan to accomplish during their term. Does that make sense? That's what the Lord is doing. He's saying, this is what I came, for, what I came to do. Okay? And, 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 and so this is my objective. This is the, the plan of what I'm going to do. All right, five things. To bring glad tidings to the poor, proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. These five things. But he begins these five things with claiming that the Spirit of God is upon him, and that he has been anointed. Now, why is that important? Because in Hebrew, the word anointed, or the anointed one, is Mishach. Uh, the anointed of the Lord uh, is that Mishach Adonai. And that was a title given to the kings of Israel. But the, the word Mishach, which means anointed, we also translate into English as Messiah. Okay? So the word Messiah means literally anointed. In Greek, the word Mishach is translated as Christos. And we get the word Christ. So whether it says, the, and really it should be the Christ, the anointed one. Uh, whether it is Mishach or Christos, Christ, Messiah, it is exactly the same word. So basically what he's saying is, I am the Messiah. They're not very happy with that. All right. So the way that, that we're going to reflect on this, and we'll see how far we can get. The way we're going to reflect on this, we're going to reflect it in, in four, each one of those five um, things that he's going to accomplish, we're going to reflect it in four, really three, three different uh, areas. Sort of, four if we add more. The first letter A, so, so if you see there under identifying with the mission of the Lord, questions to ask and prayers to pray, I listed uh, four things that we're going to reflect on under each of those uh, five points. Uh, and then underneath each of the points, you see those, th th those letters correspond to, uh, like letter A would be in general. Uh, the question would be in general. Uh, for us, like, you know, a society, as a people, as a church. Letter B then, we're going to ask for you specifically. I'm going to ask you, but for you, how does this relate? And then, Letter C is a prayer that you can make to the Lord when you get home to re reveal you more about that specific point. And letter D, I don't know, 
you can take notes there, or what else would you ask uh, the Lord? That's, that's, that's for you to reflect on, okay, for you to continue uh, deepening in the word. All right? And that'll make sense as we go along. All right, let's look at the first one. So remember, the Spirit of the Lord has, is upon me because He has anointed me. Anointed me. Number one, to bring glad tidings to the poor. To bring good news to the poor. But it's not just the poor who have no money. Now the poor we will always have. Um, Bishop uh, Flores in our retreat this week was reflecting on, on, on the poverty of Jesus. And was reflecting that in reality um, it's a sad thing that that the poor focus mostly on what they don't have. And because they don't have, they shed their spirit of poverty because they are longing for what they don't have, the richness. And so they're no longer living like the poor. They don't understand how to be poor, the, the poverty that the Lord has come to bring because their thoughts and their minds, instead of turning towards God, they're turning towards the things they don't have. And so they're not happy. So in a sense, there's no poverty. What it is, it's misery. The poor are living in misery because of their longing. Because they're longing, they look at the rich and they long what they don't have. So they're no longer poor because at least they have that desire, but they don't get it. So they're in misery. So let's not confuse. There's more misery than poverty in the world. Does that make sense? There's more misery than poverty in the world. But in general, what is our poverty? Is it lack of charity as a society, as a church? What is it that we're lacking in the church, uh, in society, as a people? How would you define our greatest poverty? Anybody? How about in the nation? What would be the greatest poverty in our nation? Huh? You, you, you can bring down your mask. Lack of unity. Lack of unity, absolutely. You know, it's, we're so politically divided. Lack of unity. What else? Anything else? Spirituality. Okay, there's a, set, there's a lack of spirituality. There's a poverty of spirituality in our nation. We, we become, I and mean, we're not the one nation under God that our founding fathers had envisioned. We're pretty pagan by now. All right? How about in our church? Some poverty in our church. Commitment. There's a commitment. Transparency, perhaps? Equality, perhaps? How about in your lives? What is your poverty? Letter B. What is you, remember, in, in letter A, it's in general. Uh, church, society, we as a people, our nation. Uh, letter B is you specifically. Think about this. What is your poverty? Is it lack of charity towards others? Is it unforgiveness? Perhaps resentments? What is it that you're lacking in your life? And then you can pray. Lord, reveal to me my poverty. You know, because it may be something, you may be thinking of one thing, and in fact, it's something else. Let the Holy Spirit, let the light of the Holy Spirit come upon you, and in all honesty, let the Lord, the Lord look, folks, if you ask the Lord, the Lord will show you. You gotta be ready to see uh, what he's showing you, and you have to be ready to accept what he's showing you. Perhaps it's something that you don't want to see, because sometimes there's a, a blindness, in like number three. Well, sometimes he has to remove our blindness to be able to see what he's showing us. And of course, uh, uh, I, I put some possible things that he can show you, but or some leading questions. Uh, Charity, unforgiveness, resentments. But I don't know. I want you to figure that one out. D does that make sense how we're dividing it up into those four areas? General, church, society, people. Yeah, we as a people. I ask you directly. We pray. And then whatever else you want to add. Number two. To proclaim liberty to captives. Well, what keeps us in bondage? 
as a nation. Violence, fear, fear racism. You think so? What else? As a nation, as a, as a church, what keeps us in bondage? Sex abuse scandals, uh, mistrust of hierarchy. You know, Pope Francis, there has never been so much criticism launched against a pope as people have criticized Pope Francis. And this is by conservative Catholics, simply because they don't like his stance on the vaccine and, and people that you thought would never criticize a church leader. The people that would say, oh, no, no, we must respect Pope John Paul II, we, must, we cannot criticize Pope Benedict, are now criticizing Pope Francis. And that's wrong. That's wrong. Because it, it, it doesn't make sense. Just because you don't agree with his agenda. There's lack of unity in the church. We're captives to, we're in bondage to mistrust. And captives in bondage to our own agenda. We confuse, we confuse our beliefs with our political agenda. And, and so we're captives to that. What keeps you, how about in your lives? What keeps you in bondage? Addictions? Drug, alcohol, pornography, infidelity. What is it that you cannot let go of? Shopping, eating, smoking, alcohol, I don't, I don't know. How about asking the Lord to show you? Like if you're genuinely interested in the Lord proclaiming liberty to you, to you and declaring you free, we need to ask the Lord, show me Lord. What is keeping me in bondage? What am I holding on to in my life that does not allow me to be the son and daughter that you have called me to be? Because that's what bondage is. Bondage is what the enemy uses to keep us bound to him and, and we're, not able to, we're, not, we're not free to move. We're not enjoying the freedom of sons and daughters of God. So ask the Holy Spirit to show you. Lord, let the light of your Holy Spirit be upon me. I want to see the things that I am too attached to but are keeping me in bondage. I don't know what they are for you. As the Holy Spirit to show you. And letter D, whatever else you want to add, or whatever prayer you want to do, or perhaps the Lord is revealing to you those areas of bondage, then write them down. Number three, recovery of sight to the blind. What is it that we cannot see as a nation, as a church, as a people? As a society, I mean, the list could go on and on because we refuse to see equality. We refuse to see that the immigrant who crosses the border illegally is my brother and sister who needs to be ministered to. We refuse to see, you know, that racism is a problem. Um, what is it that we cannot see as a church? I don't know. The rights of victims. Um, I don't know. There's, there's so many things that keep us Blind. How about in your life? What is your blindness? Are you indifferent to the poor around you? To the immigrant? Indifferent to the marginalized? To the outcast? Are you indifferent? You know, it's, um, it's just a reality that, that when, especially when I speak of immigration and, and, and you know, I, I get some criticism. And every priest does, even the bishop gets letters when we defend the immigrant. Uh, we, people call it Catholics, faithful Catholics, calling them lazy, rapists, murderers. They come and take our jobs. There's no compassion. What would Jesus do? We have to be, we have to acknowledge that we have a blindness, of racism, of bigotry. What, but what is your blindness? What is it that you cannot see? Is it a family member that you cannot accept? Perhaps your son, your daughter told you that they, were, they have a same-sex same sex attraction and you cannot accept them. What is your blindness? What is it that you cannot see right now in your life? Again, remember, we're doing this as a, as a community, as a church, as a nation. But, you know, and it's, you know, it's very easy to point out the blindness of our nation or the blindness of our church or the blindness of society. But then in letter B, when I ask you specifically for you, that's a little bit more personal, isn't it? So I'm not going to tell you what it is because I can only say it for me. What is my blindness? So what is your blindness? What is, what is it that keeps you from seeing around you? So we can say, we, 
and letter C is a prayer, but again, the prayer is just what the Lord was giving me, but you can pray, you know, however the Holy Spirit inspires you. This is what I wrote. Lord, what is my blindness? Is it the poor around me? Is it the marginalized? Is it not accepting my son, my daughter, or a loved one for who they are? Holy Spirit, I want to see. Show me. I will obey. That's significant. Because what is the point of the Lord showing us if we don't follow through? Amen? What is the point of the Lord? You ask the Lord, show me, Lord. And I, like I said, el Señor te va a enseñar. The Lord will show you. But then we don't want to see. We don't want to follow through in what the Lord is showing us. Number four. To let the oppressed go free. That's a good one. Again, as a nation, society, as people, as a church, what worries or anxieties are oppressing us right now? Obviously the pandemic. There's still more letters to the Greek alphabet for more strains and varieties of COVID. We're in Omicron. We still have a few more letters to go. It's been 25 months that we started this. And we're still... Experts say that we're almost out of it. I don't know. Is that what they said last year? We'll see. A lot of worries, anxieties as a nation. As a church, again, uh, I've never seen such criticism from conservative Catholics against a pope as we see against Pope Francis. And that's, that's very disheartening. I never saw it under Pope Benedict or Pope John Paul II. These are, these are you know, well... I mean, I cannot give you a profile of the people that criticize. I mean, yes, during Pope uh, John Paul II and, and, uh, and, and Pope Benedict, mo the more liberal sides of the church were critical of them, but not to the level that Pope Francis has been criticized by the more conservative wing of the church. Even cardinals are publicly opposing him. And, and that, that, that's, that's... We should not rejoice over that. It's a sadness, church. But there's such division even in the church. Don't you agree? It's a sadness. And I worry about that. I worry for that. Well, I still trust in the Lord who said that no matter what, the powers of hell will not prevail against the church because it is built on the rock. And so, you know, I, I believe that. Uh, how about right now? What is oppressing you right now? Could be the pandemic? Could be a COVID diagnosis, could be uh, cancer, could be worries about your family. Um, there's so many things. Do you know what's oppressing you right now? What are your anxieties? What are your worries? Sometimes you can feel anxious and don't even know why, right? Sometimes I'm feeling with a lot of, sometimes I feel, wake up or in the middle of the night with a lot of anxiety. And I'm like, what's going on? I, I'm not aware of anything major going on. What is, what is it? And then I'm there praying. What, where is this coming from, Lord? Prayer. Lord, why am I anxious? Is it due to the uncertainties I am facing? Health? Finances? What is oppressing me right now? And tell the Lord, I want to be free, Lord. You came to let the oppressed go free. Lord, I want to be free. I want to live in the freedom of being your son, of being your daughter. You have made me to be loved and to be free. Set me free once again, Lord. I give you permission. The thing is this. You have to be real when you say that. And authentic. Because our addictions, our anxieties, the things that keep us in bondage, our depressions, our anxieties, the things that keep us oppressed, we have gotten so used to them that they become security blankets for us. The alcoholic, he knows he's wrong. He knows he's messing up his life, his health, and his family. But he cannot visualize his life without the alcohol. Any addict would tell you that it's hard for them. They know it's wrong. They know they have to give it up. They know they have to stop and they justify it. But they cannot visualize their lives without it. Sometimes God has to intervene radically. And there will be perhaps a violent reaction from us. When we don't want to let go of that 
security blanket. Give God, that's why you have to give God permission. No matter what. And for that one to be set free from our oppression or addictions, we need to have a community of love that will accept it. You cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. You cannot do it just with God. We need a community to help you. Give God permission. Letter D, what else do you want to add? Number five, final one. And to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Now, editorial note. As you know, the Sunday readings are on a three-year cycle. This is year C. The last time we saw this reading, this gospel reading, or these three readings from today, was uh, the, third Sunday of, uh, the third Sunday of Ordinary Time in year C, three years ago. Uh, okay, right now, it is the third Sunday of ordinary, ordinary Time, year C, but three years ago, we saw it again. That was 2019. The pandemic had not started. Well, it, had, it was in China, and there were some cases, but in January, it was, I, checked, um, I checked back to uh, the, what Sunday was it in 20... Um, 19, and it was uh, January 26th or 27th. And so I, I, have my, I looked at my notes from that homily, and I have something similar. Do you believe God has promised for blessings for us this year? And I think you all said, yes, we do. And look what happened. We had, we had the same, I had the same, some of the same questions three, three years ago. And I challenge you, because he says, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. And I asked, do we actually believe that this will be a, very, a year of abundant blessings? And I said, yes, I do. In faith, I believe so. And then the pandemic happened. To where, should I even ask this again? <laughs> of course. Or, or rather, 2019 was the year that, that, at the end of that year was when it happened. Sorry, I, I was a little bit off on the year. It, it was 2019, 2021. 20, yeah, it was 2019, at the beginning of 2019. So it was normal. But then at the end, of 20, that's why it's called COVID-19. At the end of 2019, boom. It changes our lives. Because it came in 2019, even though we didn't feel the effects until 2020. Until 2020. Can we still today, after seeing what happened... After three years ago, in faith saying, I believe this will be a year of blessings from the Lord, can we still in faith say, yes, I believe that this 2022 <coughs> will be a year of great blessings for my life? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. In spite of what has happened, right? Because our faith is still in the Lord. Because we know that he did not cause the pandemic. We know that. We know that, you know, he does allow things, but he's not the author of evil. And I wonder how much we truly learned to depend upon him in the last two and a half years or two years, two full years. But really, we saw this reading three years ago, 2019 of January. Yes. So let me, let's, let's read this again. The, the, the questions that I ask in faith. Letter A, is, this is for all of us in general. Do we believe God and his promises for blessings for us this year? That this will be a year of grace, a year acceptable to the Lord? I do. I did in 2019. Even though at the end, you know what happened? Because of faith. Because God did not cause this. Because God has a desire to bless us. And to feed us. And to strengthen us. How about you, personally? Do you believe God and His promises for blessings for you in 2022? Yes or no? Yes. yes. I do. I, and I, I believe it for you. Do you believe that this will be a year of grace acceptable to the Lord? Yes. So then pray. Tell you what. Let's pray together. There, uh, letter C, number five, letter C. Let's do it together with me. Ready? And, and, and I mean, you don't have to, you don't want to be like, come on, Father, it's almost five o'clock, I'm hungry, and you know, just uh, finish. <laughs> you know what? Take a nap. I'll wake you up before the collection, because you cannot sleep through the collection, okay? The, um, but if you really believe it, you, know, you don't have to just like scream it out unless you really want to like 
affirm. It's up to you how you want to do this, softly or loud or, uh, or take a nap. Say it with me, because I believe this. Lord, together, Lord, I take you at your word. I declare in faith that you can make everything work for good. I choose to entrust my family, my health, all of this year to your providential care. I do believe, Lord, that even in trials and tragedies, you are actively working for my good because you love me. There is no harm in your will towards me. I choose to live in the freedom of sons and daughters of you, my loving Papa. My loving Papa. Declare your intent to trust in your loving God and declare 2022 to be a year of grace, of a year acceptable to the Lord. I do believe. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Holy Spirit, he was, was incarnate, incarnate of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary and, became, and man. became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried oh, no, no, no. and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again in glory, glory to, to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the Lord who always hears our prayers, we come to him with all of our needs. That the church continue to promote reading and reflection upon the word of God as a means to promote Christian unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that legislators at every level may more carefully seek the truth as they work to enact laws that are both wise and enlightening. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all children who have yet to be born may be welcomed to a world where they will be affirmed and valued. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that literacy for all peoples may be strongly promoted by governments and supported by more agencies around the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our hear our prayer. That all in this community deepen their knowledge of the faith as they become more and more a part of the one body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue praying for all of you at home the domestic church. We pray for the health and well-being of Susie Martinez. In Thanksgiving for the birthday of Adolfo Garza and David Bujanos. In thanksgiving for Sulema Rodriguez, who has is come, who, who, welcome back, it says, who has been joining us the last few days after her cancer treatments. For the health of Lili Ramirez, 
Uh, for the recovery, uh, for the family, uh, the Covarrubias family, who have all been infected with COVID, including the three children, uh, that they recover. For all of your needs. For the eternal rest of Father Lee Da Costa, who passed away during the week, last week. Father, hear the prayers of your family gathered here today and in the domestic church. Guide us, always teach us to be obedient to your call. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Please be seated as we receive your gifts of rain wine and as we receive your financial contributions. family, the altar is ready. The table is set. Pray that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion, 
for the waywardness that is ours. He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Go around. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and then turned willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Say the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Mario, our auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us how we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary Mother of God Queen of the universe Saint Joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life we may praise and glorify you through your son Jesus Christ through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so we come in comfort, with confidence before the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us, us this day our daily bread, bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of God's peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who have been called to the table of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ give me say for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ give me save for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all the body of Christ. Things, and I desire the body of to Christ. receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved sorry that was the opening prayer I apologize let us pray grant we pray almighty God that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life we may always glory in your gift we ask this through Christ our Lord amen uh, just a reminder uh, only last week so I was on retreat we didn't have daily mass or Eucharistic adoration this coming Tuesday uh, once again, we continue with our daily mass schedule. And please uh, be reminded, there's Eucharistic Adoration uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Tuesday and Thursday, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at St. Joseph. Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon here in the chapel at Queen. If you signed up for an hour, please fulfill it. If you haven't signed up, please sign up for an hour. And if you can sign up, just be aware that you can always come during those uh, hours that, is, that the Blessed Sacrament is exposed to come and, and pray and, and be in the presence of the Lord. I believe there are calendars left, right? Uh, we do have some calendars left? Okay. So there should be some at each entrance? Okay. So last week was the first day, so you took one or two? Uh, you can take some more. Uh, there's, and I think I have some more at the house in case we're, we're, in case we're enough for tomorrow. Uh, it's not a problem because I have about 50 more at the house. So take as many as you like, I guess. That'll be good. All right. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit fall upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Do me a favor. Have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Stay safe. Take care of each other. Get vaccinated if you can. Uh, protect each other. Please stay safe and stay holy. And trust the Lord because this will be a year of blessings. Have a beautiful weekend. Yeah.